Hello, in this lecture we're going to create the liability section of the balance sheet. In prior lectures we have taken a look at the assets in terms of first current assets and then property plans and equipment giving us the total assets at that time. Then we are now going to move on to liabilities and that will be part of the second part of the balance sheet meaning it'll then sum up to total liabilities and owner's equity. We are going to be taking this information of course from the adjusted trial balance the adjusted trial balance in the format of debits and credits, we are that now formatting it in the format of the accounting equation. Still the double entry accounting system, just in two different formats, just reshuffling the puzzle so that different readers can understand the financial statements, even though they don't understand debits and credits. We will then be focusing in on the liabilities, the orange accounts here. We will start off with the subcategory of liabilities that is current liabilities. Those are going to be liabilities that will be due within a year's time period. So we have to pay something or do some work within that year's time period. That is what makes it current. The year's time is basically an arbitrary number. The idea of it is that we want to know what's going to be due shortly <laughs> so that we know that we have the assets, hopefully the current assets that will be liquid enough to pay off those current liabilities. That's the idea of breaking out the liabilities between short-term liabilities, current liabilities, and long-term liabilities, those that will be due past a year's time period. Notice that we have the colon here, that it is representing that it is the subcategory, and then we're just gonna pull in our numbers. So we have the current, we have the accounts payable, we're just pulling that number in. Note that the credit is represented on our trial balance in terms of brackets, but when we pull that into our financial statements, no brackets, we're not having debits and credits, we're putting it on the inner column, not because it's a debit or a credit, but because we're just going to list it out there. So we're converting from debits and credits to a plus and minus format. And so we're just adding up the liabilities and putting it in plus and minus. We are then going to pull over the wages payable. Same thing. This number, we're just pulling that over. And then the unearned revenue, we are pulling that over. Note that we are indenting these and then we will put the total in the right hand side. So we're gonna say the 12,150 plus the 2,500 plus the 8,250 gives us the 22,900. Note that we have total liabilities here rather than having total current liabilities. Why is that? Because we don't have any long-term liabilities. So rather than us having total current liabilities uh, and then saying we don't have any long-term liabilities, we're just gonna say, hey, this is gonna be the subcategory of current liabilities and then that includes all liabilities, including current and non-current. If we had uh, long-term liabilities, we would then have a total current liability subcategory, and then we would be lifting out the long-term liabilities and have a subcategory for those. So that can be a bit confusing when we don't have any long-term liabilities, so keep that in mind. If we plug that back into the balance sheet, we now have the liability section. We have created the current assets, the uh, property, plant, and equipment. We have the total assets then. We have the liabilities. We now will be moving to the owner's capital section, the owner's equity section, and that will then give us the total liabilities and equity, finishing out the balance sheet, and then we'll dive into some more detail about this number in the capital account.